So I was thinking about a way, an experimental way to illustrate this boiling point vapour pressure stuff that I covered in the lecture notes and this is what I've come up with. Now, at the end of this video, I think something pretty amazing, something pretty cool happens, but I'm a physical chemist, I'm bound to think that, so I'll leave it up to you to decide if you agree with me or not. This video was filmed in the Physical and Applied Chemistry Teaching Lab, which hopefully you'll come to next year. So I have some cyclohexane in this conical flask here. This conical flask is connected to a vacuum pump through the side arm, and that enables us to reduce the pressure inside the flask. We can measure the pressure on this pressure gauge, and we can also measure the temperature on the thermometer. Now, this pressure gauge is calibrated so that zero corresponds to atmospheric pressure. So at the moment, the pressure in there is atmospheric pressure. It's reading zero, so the pressure is neither above nor below atmospheric pressure. Now, remember, a liquid will boil when it's vapour pressure, that's the pressure exerted by molecules that leave the surface of the liquid and make their way into the vapour phase, equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure. And in this case, we can change the surrounding atmospheric pressure inside the flask by connecting it to a vacuum pump. Now, cyclohexane under normal laboratory conditions, atmospheric pressure, normal temperatures as a liquid because its vapour pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I run the video is switch on the vacuum pump and that's going to reduce the pressure here inside the vessel. So I'll run the video now. Vacuum pump switched on and you see the pressure gauge drop as we're removing all of the air in here. And then because we've reduced the pressure the liquid can boil because the vapour pressure is now equal to the surrounding atmospheric pressure which we have lowered. So let's take a look at the temperature. So it's already cooled a bit, so it's 9 degrees C, and you can see that the temperature is dropping as the boiling is actually happening. The reason the temperature is dropping is it's the most energetic molecules that leave the liquid phase and make their way into the vapour phase, so that's taking energy out of the, the liquid, so that, that's taking heat out of the liquid. So those energetic molecules are leaving the liquid, causing the temperature of the liquid to drop. Now, if we keep our eye on the boiling liquid here, temperatures continue to drop, the liquid continues to boil, and at a certain point, something interesting happens, and it's just happened. So you can see some solid cyclohexane start to appear. So this is, a, I think, a very interesting phenomenon because at the same time as the liquid is boiling, the liquid is also freezing. So we have those two processes which are thought to be at opposite ends of the extreme happening simultaneously. So the liquid is both boiling and freezing at the same time. This is called the triple point. So we have managed to achieve the triple point of cyclohexane where both boiling and freezing of the liquid occur simultaneously. This is not often seen, but... Here we are with an experimental demonstration of it. At the triple point, all three phases, solid, liquid and gas, are in equilibrium with each other, which means the Gibbs energy, the Gibbs free energy, is the same in all three phases.